Good evening, guys. Good morning if you're over in America. Welcome to Token Yandy. We're about to get started. I see we've already got a few people in the chat. Um, testing. Test, 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 test. We've got Why I'm the Fire in Tokyo. Subscribe to her channel if you haven't yet already. I need to start looking into the streaming. Yes, streaming is a lot of fun. You get to talk with people live, and yeah, I love it. Jason Scott is here. He says, wrapping up lesson one this weekend, so this is perfect timing. Great. So you just started studying Japanese, I guess. You started Genki 1. Um, yeah, we're going to cover lesson two today. Lesson two is a pretty easy one. Before we do that, I want to talk about the typhoon a little bit, but we will get to that fairly shortly. So anyway, how are y'all doing tonight? My specialty. <clears throat> so last night I did a... Uh, Last night, I guess. Yesterday from about 2 in the afternoon until almost 2 in the morning, I did a stream of Hello, Koto, Kotoni Mira. Courtney Miller. Hey, how you doing? You were here last night at the 11-hour stream out of my window. I'm not sure which is more exciting, whether the stream out my window or my face is more interesting, but I don't know. Today it's my face, so that's what you all got to deal with. Um, anyway. Yes, I am too. Um, I don't know if you guys saw my little update video, just a two-minute thing I took earlier today, but I went around Nagano City a little bit this morning, afternoon-ish. I wanted to see what the damage looked like outside. And the city, I, I live pretty much right in the city center. I'm about a five or ten-minute walk from City Hall. Um, five more minutes from there is the main station. So the center of the city was fine like i found a single branch and a couple i don't know signs in the ground but i'm not even convinced that those signs fell over i think someone might have turned them over and there was a lot of bikes that had fallen over but as far as in the middle of the city it's a little bit raised up from the river so it wasn't a huge issue but just 15 to 20 minutes even bike ride from here um the chikuma river and the, what is it, the Saigawa River, they overflowed a lot. And helicopters have been going over all day long from early in the morning. Uh, there was alerts going off all night long telling people to evacuate. Um, people have definitely died. I know that it's confirmed that at least 28 people passed away during this hurricane, or this typhoon, rather. And I think quite a few of them might have been in the Nagano area. Um, I know Toyono and... I've seen pictures my friend sent me from Matsushiro, which is also not far from here, where the river was just way up into the town. Like, places I've been, places I've walked around, places I've spent lots of time in are just still, this evening, inundated. Um, the Saigawa River seems to have uh, receded quite a bit. You saw in the video, I went up to where the barrier was, and last night on one of the live streams, there was um, it was up to that barrier. And when I went today, it was fine. So so that's good that that part's taken care of. But there's still a lot going on around Chikuma River. So our hearts go out to everyone there. And hopefully everyone is safe um, and getting out of there. I know my friend, he lives in Toyono. He just sent me a message and said that their house is okay, but they can't get away from the house. Like, it's not, there's no water in the house, but they're surrounded by it. So he can't get out. And then the power just went out a couple hours ago. So no worries, Dan. Welcome. Just talking about the situation here in Nagano. Um, the rivers and stuff. I didn't get to see it, um, but it's it's all over the news. So if we just jump over to... Where am I going here? The internet. This is, this is not Nagano, I don't think, but this is... Oh, it is Nagano. This is basically seven Shinkansen trains that are just you know they're pretty much ruined they're covered in water so well i don't know if they're ruined but they're damaged this is this is not far from here this is like 15 minute car ride like i've this this trek right here goes past my past my apartment it's it's right out back um so that's kind of crazy to see um when i go on field trips with my kindergarten we drive over this bridge right here that is showing up on the screen oh it's washed out I haven't even watched this whole video. Wow. Yeah, so that's pretty crazy. Um, yeah, 
so so you're seeing this this is the river this is this is today this is a couple hours ago and <laughs> this is not far from here so that's pretty crazy there's a lot going on I, i've been following this guy called derek westman he's a i guess he's a tv host and he's a volunteer firefighter and yesterday he was doing a lot of work a lot of people were doing a lot of work but this is like him cleaning out his house and it looks like it's filled with mud uh, this is a bridge that got just wiped out like just so much crazy stuff happened it it could have been so much worse but uh, even one casualty is is too many so very sad to hear about that but we are safe and sound here do any of you live in japan how was your night last night this is crazy just the river flowing through houses look at this This is the live video he took while, after they sandbagged this area of the river. Sorry, that's definitely going to give you some feedback. Anyway, yeah. So, still a lot going on. This is another shot of the Chikuma River. Just, just down the road from here, man. Like, I've biked on this track right here that's wiped out multiple times. It's hard to believe, like, it's so peaceful here in the middle of the city that something like this is happening less than a 15-minute drive from here. Just, that's kind of mind-blowing. Anyway, I know, I know that's not, like, a great way to start a, a lesson. Probably doesn't put anyone in the mood to learn. <laughs> but, Fukuoka was really windy. Some stuff fell down, but Kyushu was in the clear. Yeah, it seemed to come quite a bit north. So... It's good that it didn't hit the whole country. It could have been much worse if it just came up the whole coast, but Kyushu gets enough typhoons. I guess it was our turn. Um, yeah, so my Twitter feed was just full of typhoon stuff, but now it's it's back to, I don't know, whatever it is. So yeah, so let's loom wipe over to that. So this is another great reason in my mind to learn Japanese. Um... There was a big there was a big argument on Twitter that people were having yesterday or a couple days ago where NHK sent out a message in hiragana or something and they were like why don't you do it in kanji but like I think they sort of missed the point like if you can speak some Japanese in disasters like this you'll you'll be much better off because you'll be able to get way more emergency information than if you didn't speak it every single emergency alert that came to my phone last night and there was one every 15 to 30 minutes. If you were on the stream, you heard the, the thing going off every little bit. Every single one was in ridiculous Japanese that even I had a hard time reading it sometimes. But anyway, that's that's like, you know, this is a country where natural disasters occur and being ready for them is a good thing. So anyway, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump <laughs> into Genki. Genki 1, Lesson 2. So, is everyone, like, miserable now and off the stream? I'm not sure. If you're still here, say hello in the comments. Um, one thing that I talked about last week and the week before was that we were going to start doing actual practice live on stream. People were going to come into the Discord and they were going to practice what we had learned the previous week. That's the Twitter poll said people wanted to practice what they learned the previous week. So I've got the sentences up from last week. And if anyone wants to jump into the Discord and practice them, Yuki, a native Japanese speaker, is sitting right next to me. And she is more than happy to listen to your Japanese sentences and correct them or, you know, just listen. And I'm happy to listen, too. Um, but anyway, the Discord, there's a link to it down in the description. There's nobody online right now, so I'm assuming nobody wants to jump in and practice at the moment. But if anyone wants to practice the sentences from the, uh, the structures from tonight, uh, you're welcome to do, that, to do that at the end of the lesson if you jump in the Discord later. Or next week, we will cover this lesson again at the beginning for practicing. So yes, 
there's just a voice channel in the live stream. Let me jump over to that really quick so you can sort of get an idea of what that looks like. Here is the Discord. So if you jump into this voice channel right here, like that, you can talk and speak Japanese. But anyway, since at the moment it appears nobody is in there, we are going to jump right into it. So that's last week. Last week was wa des. So Andy wa America jin des. Andy is an American. Wa des was the, the very basic sentence structure that we covered. The next was the question, the question marker, which is ka. Uh, you just put that at the end of a sentence and it becomes a question. It's a pretty polite way to ask a question. You could also just raise your intonation at the end, just like in English. So in this example se sentence, we have Yuki-san wa daigakusei desu ka? You could also just say Yuki-san wa daigakusei desu? Ka? No, you couldn't say that. Daigakuse? Yeah, you wouldn't need the desk then. Um, she's not. She's not in her head. She says she is. Maybe she is. I don't know. Anyway, I hope she's not. That would mean she's a lot younger than she says she is. Anyway, moving on. The next structure we had was noun plus no. No, not no. No plus noun two. And the noun two was the main idea. And the noun one explains something about noun two. So basically, andi no keitai. So my cell phone, Andy's cell phone. So it can be, that's the first way you can use no. And the second way you could use no is just explaining something more about something. So, nandaro. <laughs> we can skip that, but yes. So we covered that last week. But since nobody's going to practice that, we're going to talk about what we're going over tonight. So lesson two of the Genki book actually covers a lot of different things. But don't get too overwhelmed because they're all actually really easy. <clears throat> so just to summarize what it covers, we've got the first thing was kore, sore, are, dare. Uh, I'm sorry, dore. We also had number two is kono, sono, ano, dono. Number two was koko, soko, asoko, doko. Number four is dare no. Number five is noun plus mo. Number six is noun plus janai desu. And then we've got the ne and yo particles. Dan says, where is everyone watching from tonight? I'm watching from Nagano. Oh, wait, I'm not watching. I'm just, I'm streaming. All right. Anyway. Uh, sorry, but Japan won over Scotland tonight. In oh, it's finished. I just saw something that they were up 14-7. I didn't know it finished. Wow. Man, they're killing it this year. Wow. It's going to be everyone's favorite sport in Japan for at least a couple months. We are drinking Scotch. <laughs> little butt of hope for Japan. Little, little... Little what of hope? I don't know. Anyway, noun plus janai this the ne and the yo particles. So that's the seven things we're covering. They're actually all pretty simple. The first four are very related, and the three particles are really simple. And janai, janai is just a continuation of what we learned last week. So don't get too worried about that. All right, so the first thing is, of course, kore, sore, are, dore. So, kore means this, and it means something that's just near you. So, kore, this, right? Super simple. Sore means that, but it's something that's near to someone else. So, if this cup was over by Yuki, I wouldn't say kore. I would say sore. And then whatever I wanted to say about it. The next one is are, which is also that, but it's not near anyone. So if I wanted to point to something over in the kitchen, I might say are. And I'm pointing at like a bowl, a cup of instant noodles or something, right? So are. If it's, if, if it's like right next to me, sort of, but not close enough for me to feel comfortable using kore and not really close to her either, I can say sore. But usually, if it's further away, you say are. Dore is the which word. So there's the who, what, where, when, how, which. We're covering a few of those today. Um, but there's, um, there's a little stipulation with this. Dore is actually only for three or more things, I believe. If you have only two things and you want to ask someone which, you would say dochi or dochi da. Right? So, dore is only three or more. That is not mentioned in the Genki book, but it's actually 
And it's, it, I mean, to be honest, it's something I mess up even now, seven years later. But, but that is an important distinction. So, everyone following so far? I think this one's pretty straightforward. Let's move on to some example sections. Let's move on to some example sentences. So, これは何ですかこれは何ですか The red part is, of course, これは So you generally add wa in the sentence structures that's, that are used in the Genki, this Genki chapter. So we have これは何ですか What is this? So 何ですか is what is. And then this, これは何ですか Remember wa from the last lesson is the topic marker, or the, the main idea marker. And the main idea of this sentence is this. これは何ですか It's a cup. これは何ですか It's a mic. Test, 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 test. So that's how you use これ. Really simple. You can put it in the topic place or it can show up in some other areas too. So the next is それ。それは、それはかっ、<clears throat> それはかっこいい。それはかっこいい。I, I, it's so hard for me to like speak in English and then switch over to To like a, just a single sentence of Japanese. It's really weird. Anyway, so t h e k a k k o i So that's cool. k a k k o i is cool. Straightforward. So it would be so t h e maybe something Yuki's holding. So if she's holding a, I don't know, there's nothing in front of her. Ah, a bag of tissues. And it's like a really cool bag of tissues. Check it out. Super cool bag of tissues. I could be like, so they were kakkoi. So they k a k k o i It's a television remote. Super cool. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, moving on to are. Are wa m e t c h a h o s h i So I'm pointing over to that bowl of some kind of instant noodle that I bought just in case everything blew up in this apartment during the typhoon. So, それはめっちゃ欲しい I really, really want that. Or maybe, I'm sorry, I said それ that time. That would be something Yuki's holding. But, are wa めっちゃ欲しい So, めっちゃめっちゃ is just like a. An adverb, in, yeah, an adverb, I think. It's, it's slangy. It's very slangy. You're not going to find it in Genki, that's for sure. But it, it just means I really, 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 really want something. Or really, really something. In this case, hoshi is want. So, are wa m e c h a hoshi. So, use m e c h a It's a fun word. I use it all the time.、Um, some people will tell you you shouldn't use it at work. I use it at work all the time. I wouldn't worry about that too much. Yeah. Moving on to dore. So, you've noticed that. Kore, sore, and are have all been followed by wa, the topic marker, but you cannot use wa with dore. Why? I don't remember. And it doesn't actually tell you in the book. It's just sort of a rule you have to remember. For dore, you have to add ga. Dore ga, dore ga i is this sentence. Dore ga i. So which one do you want? The, the literal translation for this sentence is. <laughs> Which one is good? But the meaning comes out to which one do you want? Dore ga i. So if I have, remember, three or more chocolates. So I've got some Lindor chocolate here. If I had three of these in front of me, three different types, and I wanted Yuki to pick one, I would say, Dore ga i. And she'd pick one, and I'd get two. I win. Yay. <laughs> she looks very angry right now. So that's how you use dore. You always use it with ga. Not with wa. And that's it. That, that's, that's literally it. Moving on. These are used、uh, very similarly. The, the rules are very similar. We've got kono, sono, ano, and dono. But for these, you have to have a noun attached to it. So you can't just say, kono wa nan desu ka? That, that doesn't work. You'd have to say, kono kappu wa something, something. Nani iro desu ka? So what color is this cup? So, kono, it just means this, but this particular thing. So, it's more specific. The rules are the same. Kono is this near me.、Uh, sono is that near someone else. Ano is that near none of us or near nobody or far off in the distance. And dono is once again、uh, which. So, dono, cho, dono choko ga i. So, just like the last sentence, exact same thing. But. You have to actually say chocolate after it. So, the example sentences, they're very similar. Please slow me down if you have any questions. Just type it in the chat and I will happily answer it. I, I don't need to get on a roll or anything. 
Um, but I'm just going to keep going if nobody has any questions. And if anyone wants to, remember, you can practice these at the end in the Discord. All right. So, この傘はいくらですか So, この傘 this 傘 is umbrella, はいくらですかいくらですか is how much, is something. So, この,かこの傘はいくらですか It's a million dollars or something like that. Next is, so I'd be holding the umbrella or pointing to it right next to me in the situation. So, その財布はでかい。So, if Yuki had a purse or, or her wallet and she was holding on to it, I would just say, その財布でかい。Uh, this is it. It's pretty big.、Um, the funny thing in Japan is most guys, they have this same size、um, wallets. It, it's really funny. Because I see dudes walking around with a, per- with a wallet this big, but in their back pocket, just like a guy in America walk- would walk around with, with his wallet. So, literally, half of it is sticking out of the back of their pocket. And sometimes I just want to like pull it out just to like show them how silly it is to walk around with a, a wallet in the back of their pocket. But this is Japan, and nobody's ever going to steal it while they're here. But. As soon as they go to some other country with a wallet like that sticking out of their back pocket, I'd be a little nervous. So, if you're Japanese and watching this, don't walk around with a wallet this size hanging out of your back pocket. Moving on. Ano ji tencha wa. Nani iro? Ano ji tencha wa nani iro? So, what color is that bicycle? I don't know when you would ever actually use this sentence. Maybe if you, it was really far away and you, you couldn't. You couldn't tell what color it was, or it was a really weird color. You didn't know the name for it. Maybe then you could use something like this. So, ano jitensha, jitensha is bicycle, wa nani iro. So, I didn't add deska. You, you could add deska to here. So, nani iro deska. Up above also, I had ikura deska. You could take off the deska. It's a little less formal, but it's also fine. So, kono kasa wa ikura.、Uh, yeah. And ano jitensha wa. Nani iro desu ka? Or just nani iro. It's fine. You just have to add the、um, intonation to the end of the iro in this sentence. Once again, with dono, you cannot use the wa particle. So you have to be careful and make sure you use oops. Make sure you use ga. In this case, dono sakana ga tabetai? Or dono sakana ga tabetai in desu ka? Oops, I added another little grammar point which we won't cover right now.、Um, so which fish do you want to eat? I don't, I don't know. What kind of fish do you guys want to eat? Monkfish. Yuki wants to eat monkfish. Nihongo de? Anko. Anko. I'm not a fan of Anko. It's one of those few, like, I'm usually not picky just by the way things look. I'm more, I more have problems with consistency. But Anko just looks so unappetizing that I just can't bring myself to eat it. Like, I've seen it. Oh man, it does not look good. I wonder if I can bring a picture up on the screen really quick because I, I need to. It's, it's necessary. Let's see, we'll pop this one over here and bring up Google. Anko. Anko. U? Yes. U. Anko. So Yuki wants to eat Anko Nabe. So here's the actual fish, right? Already we're in trouble because this, this does not look appetizing. Doesn't look like something I want to eat. But, like, you don't just eat the fish. What you eat is all of its insides. This. This is what you eat. Nuno. The eggs. You've got ita. I have no idea what this is and I don't want to know. Here's the sides of it. This is the. Who knows? I don't know. Does anyone watching this stream right now want to eat that? Anyone? Yuki says she does. Look at this. Look at this. This is, this is what they put in a nabe. In, like, a big pot and just boil it in front of them. I don't know. I'm usually not one that doesn't want to eat things just by looking at them, but this is one of those things.、Um, the f- there's a really cool phrase for that, like, not liking something even though you've never tried it. It's one of my favorite phrases in Japanese. It's called, I guess it's kind of a word, but it's kuazu girai. Kuazu girai. Could you type that in chat for me, Dan? Kuazu girai. It means. The literal translation is without eating, hate. 
kuazu girai, but it just means it means it's like that idea of disliking something without actually trying or just disliking it by sight. Courtney Miller says, seems interesting to try. LOL. Yuki says the taste is very good. I don't know. The consistency is what worries me. But hey, man. I mean, more power to whoever wants to try it. It, it probably, it probably would be great for lots of people. Just, just not me. Maybe someday I'll just try it. I usually end up trying all these things. Sometimes it turns out good. Sometimes it doesn't. Recently, I like Negi Toro. Yes, I like Negi Toro, but Negi Toro, I never disliked. I just never tried it. So, Kuwazugirai. Thank you, Dan. All right, so our next one is the same sort of the first characters, Ko, So, and A. And that sort of signifies the same idea, which is close to me, close to them, farther away from both of us. But in this situation, it's more of here, there, and where. <clears throat> So we've got koko, which is here, koko. Then we've got soko, which is over there, but near someone else. So, for example, if I want to, I want Yuki to get me something. So, can you please get me a tissue? And she says, eh, where are they? But I see them right next to her. I would just say soko. Or if maybe they're across the room, but she's standing up and I'm sort of lying down sick. I could just point over to where they are way over on the other side of the room and say asoko, which is there but near to neither of us or nobody. Um, if I was talking about where you are, so I wanted to ask a question about how the weather is by you, that is you people, you, you people, you guys watching, I could say soko no tenki wa dou desu ka? For example, just I just made that up on the spot. But how is the tank the the tanky? How is the weather there? I uh, I didn't make example sentences for koko soko and asoko. There's no example sentences in the book either, really, because in the beginning you're really only going to be using these for like for the situations I just said when you're saying like over there here, over there like pointing out things that you wanna see look at have you know go stuff like that so just koko soko asoko the only exception to this is dopo which is of course if we go back where this one you probably all know it's one of the first things i think everyone learns and it is just where so my example sentence sentence here is poke spotto wa doko or poke spotto wa doko desu ka I don't know if any of you guys play Pokemon Go. I, I haven't played it since the first two or three weeks it was out. Yuki and I got addicted to it for, I don't know, two or three weeks. We went really hard, and I realized it was probably not healthy. I mean, physically it was healthy, but you know what I mean. So we just we stopped. And But it's still really popular here, mostly among middle-aged men. Um, we have a new friend from all these festivals I've been going to. Uh, you can see pictures of those on our on my Twitter but <laughs> he's like 50 something he's the main guy for the festivals in our area in our chiku the, this area and um he was playing pokemon go at the last festival and he asked me if i have any friends that are at least 10,000 kilometers from here so if any of you play pokemon go and live at least 10,000 miles from nagano city japan he wants to be friends with you on pokemon go i don't know why because i haven't played in so long but i, I don't think it's anything unsavory I think it's well-meaning. Anyway, poke spot wa doko? Poke spot wa doko desu ka? I see people well into their 50s or 60s playing. Yeah, I think it's mostly middle-aged men and sometimes their wives slash girlfriends that are playing it these days. I, I see younger people playing it too, but in the beginning it was mostly like kids, people my age playing it, and then now it's just older guys sitting in their cars or in circles at like 11 p.m. raiding in the park dark corners i don't know it's pretty funny I, i'm almost tempted to try it again but yuki says creepy i don't know <laughs> anyway so doko doko is very important if you want to know where the toilet is toide wa doko desu ka or just toide wa doko y you're, you don't need the desu ka like that's one thing i always want to point out um obviously when you're learning every book every 
video, every website, it's going to give you the full phrase, right? It's going to be nani nani doko desu ka? And it's going to have that ending all the time. But if you don't remember it, I mean, it's not that hard to remember. But if you don't, like when you're actually speaking, things like this often just don't come out. It's okay. You're still going to get your point across if you say toire wa doko. In fact, when I'm at a restaurant, I generally, I don't even know if I say desu ka. Sometimes I'll just be like, o terai wa doko, or stuff like that. Because, I mean, technically speaking, you don't need to be polite in that situation anyway. So, yeah, just something to keep in mind with all of the sentences that we go over. If it's desu ka, or whatever, or just this, you can usually cut that. Moving on. The fourth part of this Genki 1 lesson 2 goes over dare no. So, dare means who. You'll hear this in anime all the time. Dare, or dare da, which in that situation is just a really impolite way of saying who are you. Don't don't say dare da when you meet someone. It's it's pretty rude. Um, I've I've had some, I don't know. There was, it, it's usually I don't know Thai or Filipino women, maybe. Whenever like I've met some of them somewhere, it they usually say dare da like when they're asking who I am, but not not like in the they're not trying to be impolite, but for some reason I don't know if it's a textbook that is in that language or what, but. Yeah, it feels really rough. So don't say dare da. It's fun in anime. You know what it means. But anyway, dare means who. If you add a no particle to the end of dare, it becomes whose. So dare no something. The example sentence is dare no keitai, which is cell phone or smartphone. So dare no keitai. So if I was just holding my, my phone right here, I'd be like dare no keitai. And... That's it. That's whose cell phone. Um, just to point out what I've been pointing out all along, you can add deska to this. Obviously, it requires deska. Ah. <laughs> Take a look at this thing. This is like a, a kaseki, which means a, uh, a fossil. Take a look at this. Dare no keitai. Can you even can you even see that? I don't. I have the focus manual focus turned on. So look at this. Look at this thing. This is this is the cell phone that Yuki's new job gave her. This is her work cell phone. I can't even believe this still turns on. I think we went into the settings somewhere and found that this phone is from, what, 1997 or something? This phone is, like, 22 years old, I think. Look at this. This is her work phone. Still works, though. Anyway. So, yes. You technically would add desu ka to the end of this. So, dare no keitai desu ka? Which is fine, but you can cut it. Does anyone have any questions about dare no? I'm guessing that's a no. So moving on. This is the fifth part. We've got a noun plus mo. So the mo particle in this situation means and or also. So Dan shows up in this. Come to Japan, Dan. Dan mo YouTube channel ga aru. So Dan also has a YouTube channel. So click on him and go check out his channel and subscribe to him because he's doing a giveaway to bring someone to Japan for free. So that's awesome. And he's my moderator, so I got to call him out. <laughs> anyway, dan mo YouTube channel ga aru. So in this situation, there's like an implied other person or other person, yeah, other person, in this case myself, who has a YouTube channel. So, you wouldn't just say, like, randomly from the beginning, dan mo YouTube channel ga aru, if the conversation wasn't already about someone have else having a YouTube channel. So, that's when this particle is used. We're having a conversation, and, for example, we're at the, a restaurant, and Yuki says, oh, I want a beer, and I want one, too, maybe. So, I would say, a, ore mo hoshi. So, I want one, too, basically. Or, yeah, basically that. Or she's eating a Lindor chocolate. And I'm like, what? I want a chocolate. So, ore mo, ore mo. You don't even have to add any words after that. You can just say, ore, or watashi, which is I, add mo, and that's it. Um, I wanted to mention, actually, that that phrase in particular, like, watashi mo, or ore mo, or whatever, 
that's one of the few situations where you'll definitely use I. Like, in most situations, you can just cut the word I in Japanese, but in this case, you need it. If you want to say, I also want that in Oremo. Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah, subscribe to Dan. Come to Japan, Dan. Anyway, moving along, if no one has any questions about that one, it's pretty basic. The Genki paragraph on it in the book is is really good that's one thing about this lesson i just wanted to mention quick off the bat for anyone who's just joining is that lesson two lessons one two and even the intro they're pretty straightforward and genki does a pretty good job of explaining them when i feel like i'm gonna go way off the rails of what genki is doing in the book is in the next couple of lessons particularly the next lesson on conjugation because i'm not a fan of how they teach the first lesson on conjugation. It's it's bad, and I'll explain why next week. But that's when things are, I'm going to be going into a lot more detail than what's in the book because this the, the descriptions in the book are not good enough, and they confuse a lot of people. And that's actually why I started this series in the beginning, because of that chapter. Sorry. So anyway, moving on, we've got noun plus janai des. So the des is optional. Genki does not tell you that, but it is completely optional. In fact, I almost never add this unless I'm being pretty formal. So, janai is the short version of dewanai. Do I need a wa? It should it be the wa hiragana? What's going on? What did I miss? Iyo? Bobbu. Ah, bobbu. It's not bobbu. Ah. So, 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 I guess Bob does not necessarily need the small so, which gives it up so, It could just be so, Oh, that makes sense. But so, is so, Just so, hmm. On my f- computer when I typed out Bob, it came up with the small so, automatically. I don't know. Anyway, if anyone has any insights on that, that'd be awesome. I'm like sweating over here. I feel like I should take off the sweatshirt. Sorry, one second. Hopefully nothing shows up. It's way too hot with this giant light on me. Anyway. So, Janai is the short version short version of Dewanai, which is the negative of Desu. So you'll remember, you may remember from last week that the sentence structure was some nani nani wa something des. So x wa y des. Well, this is the negative of des. So you would just say x wa y janai or janai des. Hey Nick from Chalk Zone. Ah, oh, thanks for joining. I saw you had a comment on one of my other stream lessons. So thanks for coming live. We're already on the I think this is the second to last part of the lesson, but that's okay. <clears throat> We're on Janai, which is probably one of the biggest parts of this lesson. So my example sentences are Bobu wa igirisu jin desu. So Bob is an Englishman. Is that what you call people from England? I don't I don't even know. I just call him English, but Bob is English. Bob is an Englishman. What would you guys say? Take off one more t shirt, please. No. Well, you're right here. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Have you been drinking? <laughs> Just kidding. Anyway, what would you guys say? Bob's an Englishman or Bob's English? Translation question. Anyway, the negative of that is Bobu wa Kanada jin janai desu. Or just janai. Bobu wa Kanada jin janai. So Bob is not a Canadian. Bob is an Englishman. Or Bob is English. Whatever you prefer. Bob. Do I have any more? I don't have any more example sentences. That's that's basically it. If we go back to all the example sentences from last week. Hmm? <laughs> Yuki says, Kore wa ocha janai desu. This is not tea. It's something else. In water. <laughs> Anyway, so yes, uh, this is not alcohol, it's water. 
If you guys can think of any more example sentences, save them for practice in like a minute or two. So yeah, that's it. That is the negative of des. Next we have the ne and yo particles. This is the last part of Genki 1 Lesson 2. And it's a little bit confusing. It's really hard to explain the yo particle. The ne particle is super easy. It's just you have a sentence, and then at the end in English you would say right. So this tea is delicious, right? Or this restaurant is awesome, right? Or man, that typhoon was rough, right? In English, where you would say that right, in Japanese, you just add ne. It's even like the same intonation. Isn't it? Mm, or isn't it? Yeah, isn't it? Same thing. Yeah. So if we go back to... Bob wa igirisujin desu ne? So Bob is an Englishman, right? Or Dan mo YouTube channel ga aru ne? So Dan has a YouTube channel too, right? <coughs> or... You can't use it there. <laughs> you can't use it there. Sono saifu wa dekai desu. Dekai ne? That wallet is huge, right? Or isn't it? How much? Mm, can't use it for questions. Yeah, so anyway, that's how you would use ne. Um, where were we? Yeah, so ne is pretty easy. Yuki uses it in a different way. When she's trying to get someone's attention, and a lot of kids use it this way too. They just say ne ne or ne 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 ne. Just says, like that's it. That's like a hey 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 hey. So that's another way you can use ne. But that's that's not really the ne particle. It's it's literally a way of getting someone's attention. Nick from Chalk Jones Zone says, "I just woke up and joined, so I'm not sure if you already covered it, but on Lingo Deer, which I was trying, they would end with de wa arimasen for non desu sentences, right?" Like, watashi wa amerika jin de wa arimasen. Yes. So, Genki, this lesson two also covers de wa arimasen. And let's go back to that. Um, I didn't add it to this lesson um, because I liked their, I thought their explanation was decent, but I'll cover it right now. So, de wa arimasen is the more formal way to say de wa nai. So, it's exactly the same thing. It's just nai. And the, the more formal version of nai is arimasen. So, for example, just to explain nai and arimasen, they would both just mean no or not have, for example. Yeah. <clears throat> so, aru means to have. So, let's go back to this, this sentence here. Dan mo YouTube channel ga aru. So, the negative of aru, which is to have, is arimasen. So, Dan wa YouTube channel ga arimasen means Dan does not have a YouTube channel. Now, the less formal way, the less formal way of putting the negative of aru is nai. Nai is also the negative of aru. So, Dan wa YouTube channel ga nai means the same thing as Dan wa YouTube channel ga arimasen. So, it's just nai is less formal. So, the formal version of janai, the fully formal version is de wa arimasen. But if you make it informal, it becomes de wa nai. And if you want to make it easier to say, and what most people say in day to day life, it becomes janai. So, it all just sort of steps down into that. So, yeah, most books actually start with de wa arimasen. But Genki actually started with janai and then explained it sort of backwards, just like I did, that. Dewa nai and dewa arimasen and janai are all the same thing. So, instead of saying dewa arimasen, which you might use when you write like an email or something to a, a superior, if people want to be a little more formal when they're saying the negative of something, they would just say janai this. Like if I'm at work and I'm talking to my boss, generally I'll just say something something janai this, which is completely fine for conversation. If you're writing an email or something, then dewa Arimasen is definitely more more common if they're your superior. So I hope that helps. Well, all right, thanks. All right, great. So I think we got that there. Yeah, yeah. Comments, questions, love them. Um, I never know if I'm explaining things well enough or in detail enough unless people ask. So thank you very much. Really appreciate that. And, you know, it makes it more of a stream instead of just me recording a, a lesson. 
All right, so on to the, 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 the thing that is hardest for me to explain in this lesson, which is the yoke particle. Um, Genki, I'm quoting them here, calls it the authoritative decree. And I kind of like that. It, it sort of explains it. Um, when I learned yo, I could, I could never get it right. So what I did was I just kept using it. And if someone gave me a weird face, I knew that I used it wrong. And if someone didn't say anything, I tried it again that time. Um, sometimes people in Japan don't say anything, even when you make a mistake. So it didn't always work. But usually some if I said the same thing again to someone else, they would make a face and I'd be like, oh, I guess that way of using yo is not right. Sometimes they would just outright correct me. And I'm sure even to this day, I make mistakes sometimes with yo. But I think I got it down. It, it, in the end, it comes down to just a feeling. But yo is something you sort of use when you want to add emphasis to a sentence or if it's new information for the person you're talking about. So for example, uh, what's a good example? Uh, let me just take a look at the book. There was, a, there was a good example sentence and I usually don't copy the example sentences from the book, but this is such a hard one for me to explain that I think today I will. Past tense of death, nope. All right, so hmm? I'm like, I can't find the chapter run. There we go. All right, so the example here was tonkatsu wa sakana janai desu. Oh, I actually have examples. Hmm? Sakana janai desu. Sakana janai desu yo. So the person that was that this person is talking to might think that tonkatsu is fish. Sakana. Sakana desu ka? Tonkatsu. And the person who they're talking to, he's laughing, is <laughs> 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 saying, <laughs> Tonkatsu wa sakana janai desu yo. Uh, which is like emphasizing, that, no, that's not correct. And you didn't, they didn't know that. So it's new information. It's, and it's announcing it as fact. It's very like a factual way of speaking. Sore wa takai yo. Ah, yeah, there's a good one. So that's that's really expensive. So if a person's looking at something like, oh, this chocolate is only 500 yen. They don't know, you know, the value of the yen yet. And then someone might say, sore takai yo. Like, that's expensive. And that's like a declarative, like, yes, it's really expensive. You need to know this. That's how it is. So let's go over these example sentences that I forgot I wrote out. So, kino, yesterday wa tanoshikatta ne. Yesterday was fun, right? That was an easy one. And now another fun ones. Kino boku mo mitai yo. So I watched it too, you know. Or I watched it too. But just like with that emphasis. So if someone's like telling you about a game that was on and they're like giving you a description of the whole game, and you're just kind of getting annoyed because, you know, you watched it. You you know what happened and you're tired and you don't really want to be talking about this right now. You might say, Kino ore mo mita yo. So it's like, this person clearly didn't know that I watched it. So, this would never happen to me. I don't feel like I've ever been this annoyed about something so trivial, but like that's the only example I could think of. Anyway, so it's something they didn't know. It's declaring it as fact. So here's another example. Um, online game wa ichiji teishi ga dekinai yo. So this is sort of the most difficult sentence in the chapter, but I thought it was fun. Online game wa, it's pretty simple. Online game, so MMOs, shooters, whatever. Wa, so we've got the wa particle here. Ichiji teishi, that means pause. Ichiji teishi means pause. Ga dekinai yo. You know, you can't pause online games, mom. She would never tell me to do that. I'm 32 years old now, so that's not really an issue. But online game wa ichiji teishi ga dekinai yo. I have said that to Yuki sometimes. Or I might say, uh, hozon. Today I was playing a MMO called, uh, you guys may have heard of it. It's called World of Warcraft Classic. And I accidentally deleted something in my inventory. I had like an hour free for the first time all weekend. I've been working all weekend. And I was like, I'm going to play some WoW. And I went somewhere and I, I deleted something. And I was like, no, I needed that. And she said, did you save? <laughs> I was like, online game, a whole zone, dekinai yo. 
So basically, Hozon is safe. Deki nai yo. So it's something that maybe she didn't know. So I'm expressing that as a fact, like, hey, did you know that you can't do that? So that, hey, did you know, is the yo particle. So it's, it's very, it's, it's, it's a complicated particle. It is. And you just, my only advice is that you just got to use it. And that's, that's a, that's my advice with all the particles in Japanese. I've looked at entire books trying to explain particles. And in my opinion, they all fail miserably. I've never found one that explains them correctly. And that's because Japanese people can't even explain them. Japanese people don't even know. Like, I'll ask people, hey, should this be a wa or a ga? And they have to, th like, Japanese people, native Japanese people, teachers, whatever, they have to sit there and think for, like, a minute. And they run sentences through their heads, like, oh, uh, wa? <laughs> ah, demo. Demo, ga demo. E kana? So, like, nobody knows, man. And it's okay. It's okay to make mistakes. Make mistakes. Make tons of mistakes with particles. Um, if anyone berates you for that, you don't want to be their friend anyway. Seriously. But yes. Anyway. Japanese sign language drops most particles. It's amazing. Yes. I also drop most particles, which is also amazing. And, and that's another thing. When you're actually learning conversation and this depends on what you're you're hoping to use Japanese for right if you want to use Japanese to read books it doesn't really matter because they'll just appear and you know you don't have to put them out so then it doesn't really matter you get used to them if you want to write then it gets a little bit more complicated then maybe you have to really think about it more and you don't get that feedback from people's facial expressions or responses to tell you that you're wrong but if your goal which is my was always my goal and is the goal of this channel is to speak Japanese then you just got to do it you just got to speak and you got to make mistakes especially with particles just make mistakes with wa and ga and o and yo and ne hundreds and hundreds of times and eventually it just becomes a feeling you just know that wa goes here or which is more common when you're just having friends with conversations with friends is you just drop them Online game, I just dropped all those particles, and you know what I said, right? Online game, that's perfectly fine in conversation. You don't need wa and ga. It's more natural. It's actually more natural to just drop the particles. But you're all learning, so it's okay to learn them right now. But just know that you don't like, like, people get hung up on particles. People get hung up on them for months at a time. They're like, oh my god, I don't get it, I don't get it, I can't speak Japanese because I don't know this particle. But in the end, you're just going to stop using them anyway. So don't worry about it. That's what I have to say about particles. Learn them as best you can, then just make mistakes with them. Because, yeah, you're not going to use them anyway. I mean, you will, but you know what I mean, hopefully. All right, so where should we go now? Over to here. Question time. Does anyone have any questions? Or more importantly, does anyone want to try out some of these sentences on the Discord live? I see we have Kijko. K I K L. K I J K L E in the Discord. I don't know if they're on the stream, but if anyone wants to try out some of the things we learned today or some of the things from the last lesson or literally anything that you want to practice in Japanese. You are more than welcome to do that live on stream and Yuki and myself will listen to your sentences and give you feedback. Um, if you don't have a Discord yet, then maybe... Oh, some people are talking. Hey, chick. Oh, Yuki joined. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> Yuki's in the Discord too. So she can actually listen ah, off of the computer. That's actually really useful. You can just listen on your phone next time. Um, yeah, so Yuki's on the Discord. Um, a few other people. Dan's on the Discord. Some people that are often in the stream. They're not here tonight, but that's okay. Uh, they're on the Discord. Um, yeah, some people from last night are on the Discord. So anyway, jump over there when you get a chance, and you can go into the live stream viewer practice uh, room. And practice your sentences. If no one wants to do that tonight, it's perfectly okay. It's We're just starting out. But eventually, I mean, I'm going to be doing the Genki books for probably the next couple months. And then jumping into more advanced stuff. 
So you can always try when we get to there. And I imagine that some of these lessons are too easy for some people, so maybe they don't need to practice yet. But anyway, if you want to, make sure you tell us in chat or in the Discord before we go offline. Right. So I'll just leave the question and answer thing up. So thanks for watching tonight, guys. Uh, some of you may have been here last night. It's a very different stream than what was up, just the the darkness outside of my apartment out of that window right there, streaming the typhoon going by. Um, yeah. That actually, um, that blew up quite a bit. I think that had like 20,000 views or something. I was not expecting that. It was just a random, it was about to start getting windy. And I was like, maybe I should just like stream out my window or something. Maybe people would be interested in seeing that. Uh, and I was, wasn't was going to do it. And then you was like, yeah, let's do it. And I did. And yeah, Dan hung out for a while. A couple people here hung out for a while. It was a lot of fun. And also a lot of information got passed around. There was people whose husbands live in Nagano and they're in the Philippines or whatnot. And they were looking for information about what was happening in Nagano and stuff like flooding information and stuff. And we were actually able to provide that. And that, that was like a really cool experience to have. So thanks for being a part of that guys and thanks for being a part of tonight so that was our lesson two next week we are covering lesson three which is the beginning of conjugation um there is no need to read ahead if you have the genki book because i'm going way off like i'm going off the rails um i think it's <laughs> it's better to get a good foundation in all the conjugations than what they do which is provide words that are actually exceptions to many rules as the first words you ever conjugate which and they don't explain that so people read those words and then they jump ahead in another book or something and they try to apply a conjugation that they learned somewhere else to that word and can't understand why it's wrong every time so we're going to be doing something different but it will still be sort of in the vein of lesson three and hopefully guide us into lesson four really smoothly so yeah so thanks for coming out tonight guys um i think that's going to be all for tonight we've been live for about an hour wow that was that was longer than i expected and i'm sure some of you have a busy day to get to if you're over in america mm -hmm. oh, it's, it is sunday and yuki's got work in the morning it's a national holiday here yay dan do you have off i'm sorry Yuki's looks sad over here. She does not have off. <laughs> the Discord says I'm playing World of Warcraft. I'm not. Anyway, so I don't know if Dan heard my question. I was just, he's not sure? You're not sure if you have work tomorrow? Oh, okay, nice. Yes, it's a national holiday, so yeah, and then... The buses actually can't get a bunch of the kids, so then even Tuesday's an optional day for a bunch of the kids. It's crazy out here. No students, yeah. All right. Well, that's all for tonight, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, and I'll see you next week. Uh, invite your friends. Hit the like button if you haven't done that. That helps me every time. Um, if you're not subscribed, I think most of you are, hit the subscribe button. And ah, I have a quick question. Anyone that's watching, um, I think my grandmother's watching right now. Hi, Grammy. Uh, from America, and she's subscribed to my channel, Margo. but yeah, Margo, she's watching, I think, and she's subscribed to my channel, but she can't see the bell. She sees it on other people's channels, but there's no bell on my channel, so she never gets notifications from my channel, and she was wondering what's up, and I don't know what's up either, so can you guys see a bell next to the subscribe button? I'm not suggesting that you have to hit it, but... I'm just, I'm legitimately wondering if it's there for people or if YouTube is like shadow banning me or something for some reason. Nick says he can see it. Okay. Yuki can see it. And Dan says he can see it. So I don't know what's up. It's really weird. Anyway, if I ever figure it out, I'll let you know, Grammy. So hello. Hello in America. And thanks for joining us. She's watching on a Roku or possibly on her cell phone, so she can't actually join the chat, but I'm sure she'll say hi later. But anyway, 
It's been great hanging out with you guys. And if you don't have any questions, I'm going to sign off for tonight. All right. Hopefully I'll see you next week. And oh, big announcement. Dan and I. Ah, okay. I almost forgot about this. Oh, my goodness. So I was going to release Dan and I's big collaboration video, which we've I've been working on for like we've both been working on for three or four weeks now. Today, I was going to release it today, but after everything that happened yesterday, the whole typhoon and everything, and like all the news being sort of very important in Japan right now, like I, I felt like it was more important to broadcast stuff about the typhoon and, you know, keeping people safe than something as lighthearted as what our, our fun collaboration is going to be about. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Come to Japan, Dan. That's what I call him. Sorry. Um, yeah. So I've decided to postpone it until next weekend. So I'll be releasing that next Sunday morning, our time. So Saturday night, anyone in America. And it's all finished, just has to be uploaded. So check that out and subscribe to Dan as well, because part two of that will be on his channel. I'm not going to give away what it's about yet, but it is, it is fun. And it's a bit of a competition between the two of us. So yeah, check us out next weekend. And to next week at the same time at night will be the next lesson. So have a good night, have a good day, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Let's see if I can do this. Uh, turn on the autofocus. And Yuki also says... What? You too. Hi. 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 <laughs> Hi. Good night, guys. <laughs>